Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to share some tips for better, better press, and I'm going to create three card projects that are perfect for any occasion. You could simply change up the sentiments on each of these and use these for just about anything. Now I'm going to start these three card projects with some cotton cardstock. The Better Press Porcelain cardstock is great. And these are cut to five inches by three and three quarters inches. Now the reason I chose five inches is because I have five colors of cardstock that I want to use. And to make the math really easy, I started out with a five inch dimension. <laughs> So I am trimming three strips of each of these five colors of cardstock. All of them are one inch wide, and that's so I can fill up the entire length of this cardstock or height of this cardstock, however you want to look at it, with these colored cardstock strips. Now these cardstock strips are really just to add color to my background. So if you don't want to use cardstock, you could absolutely ink blend the background or do some masking and do some ink blending to create the same striped effect. But really, I just want to have a lot of color and I'm kind of inspired by a really summery, beachy vibe right now. So I felt like the cardstock strips really brought in kind of that beach towel vibe. Now, once I've cut three strips of each color of cardstock, I'm going to arrange them in the pattern that I'm going to want them on my card front. And I kind of went back and forth with which color needs to be where. <laughs> Probably took a little too much time doing this, but I ended up with this kind of color order here. I didn't want the blue right in the center, so I placed it towards the bottom instead. Now I'm going to take these colored cardstock strips and I'm going to adhere them to the Better Press cardstock. I'm using some tape runner adhesive and I am making sure that I line up the top and the corner of this first strip with that pre-cut Better Press cardstock. Now, why am I adding this on to Better Press cardstock? I know you're probably wondering. The reason is that when I press onto colored cardstock, because it doesn't have that cottony, fibrous makeup, it doesn't give me a really deep pressed impression. So you don't really get, you get more of a stamped look instead of a pressed look. And I really wanted these to have a pressed look. So by adding the Better Press cardstock behind my colored cardstock, it gives the colored cardstock kind of that padding, that cushion, that cottony texture that it really needs to kind of press that image into the cardstock. Now you can press directly on to colored cardstock, but you're going to get, as I mentioned, more of a stamped look than a pressed look. So if you really want that quilted, pressed, faux letter press look, I recommend adhering your colored cardstock onto a piece of better pressed cardstock before you do your pressing. Now I'm showing you another one of these panels because on the second panel, I actually added my tape runner to the better press cardstock. Now this kind of has a few drawbacks and that is because this cardstock is so cottony and fibrous, which allows it a really nice pressed image, sometimes your tape runner can peel up the corners, which it absolutely did. But you'll see that actually placing these strips onto that pre-adhesived <laughs> panel really made this part very quickly. But because that cardstock, as I mentioned, has that cottony fibrous finish, it does kind of pull up when you're using your tape runner on it. So just be careful if you choose to do it this way. Now, once I've added all of my strips onto those three panels that I created ahead of time, I have some excess. I like it that way. I would prefer to trim it down afterwards so that I make sure everything's nice and squared up. I'm just gonna take this to my trimmer and trim off any excess. If I have any white showing on the bottom, I'm gonna trim that down as well. So you can see I have my three panels here. They look just like beach towels, don't they? <laughs> and now I'm going to start with my Better Press platform. So the base of this platform is called the Chase. And if you lift up this magnetic mat that is in the Chase, it's designed to be removable and replaceable, you will find that you actually have three Mylar shims underneath that magnetic panel. And that's on purpose. That's so you can adjust the pressure of your Better Press. Now, because I layered cardstock on top of Better Press cardstock, I went ahead and removed one of those. That means I have two of the three underneath this magnetic platform. 
Now, just like your Misty stamping tool, this magnetic platform can kind of move around a little bit. And because I want to be able to press the same piece of cardstock multiple times in one place, I'm going to push this magnetic platform into the lower right hand corner and I'm gonna hold it in place with a little bit of the yellow tape that comes with the better press system. That keeps that magnetic platform from kind of moving around and allows me to press on the same piece of cardstock multiple times without anything moving. Now, when I placed my plate onto that magnetic mat, it was not straight. And so I used a strong magnet to pull it off of that surface and reposition it. I'm just lining it up with those A2 guidelines that are in the center of this magnetic mat. Then I'm gonna take the platen and I'm going to place it upside down on the magnetic feet of the chase in order to adhere my cardstock right in the center of the design. So I'm looking through the clear plate or what is called the platen to make sure that I have this cardstock centered up. Because the patterns I'm using are so geometric and straight lined, I wanna make sure that I'm getting my cardstock perfectly lined up with that design and that there's even placement around all of the borders. Then I took some more of that best ever craft tape and I rolled it up in little circles or rolls behind my cardstock and adhered my cardstock to the platen. Now I'm going to do all of my better press today with this calico white ink from Pink Fresh Studio. It is a pigment ink. So you can see I'm inking up my plate and I'm placing the platen with the pretty side facing the pattern of my press plate onto the magnetic feet of the chase. And I'm running that through my Platinum 6 die cut machine. Now I got a great impression, but I want that white pigment ink to be more intense. So without moving anything, I'm going back in and I am re-inking my dotted petals press plate. I'm replacing the platen onto the chase and then running that back through my Platinum 6 die cut machine. Now, because I have that magnetic mat taped into place and because I didn't touch my plate as far as moving it around, I'm able to repress this piece of cardstock and get a really bright, white, vibrant image onto this colored cardstock. Now, I'm going to repeat this process with two more press plates. I use the Ornate Trellis press plate background, which does have a coordinating die, by the way, and also the Berries and Blossoms press plate background, which also has a coordinating die. Now, when you're cleaning up your chase, your platen, and your press plates, you can just use a baby wipe or a cloth spritzed with some water. If you have some stubborn inks, you may use a gentle stamp cleaner. Some inks will stain your plates, but that doesn't affect its use over time. Just like a high quality stamp stain, sometimes with high quality inks, you may get some staining on your press plates, but just make sure they're clean before you move on. Now, because that's a pigment ink, I went ahead and heat set that so I wasn't smearing white all over the place. And now I have a few press plate sentiments here on the magnetic mat of my chase. I'm inking them up in some Pink Fresh Studio dye ink and passion fruit, and I'm pressing those on to some porcelain better press cardstock. And then I will use the coordinating dies to die cut all of these sentiments. Now I have to say that most inks that I have tried with my press plates seem to work really well. So don't be afraid to try the inks that you may have in your stash to create different colors or different looks with your pressed backgrounds. Now I'm taking the notched rectangle frames and I'm running this through my die cut machine using some white cardstock. I've die cut three of those because I'm making three cards. I'm also going to die cut three of these banners using the basic banners die set. This has a stamp that coordinates with it as well. And I'm going to set those aside. I've die cut those from some pink and some gold cardstock. Now I felt like these cards needed some sort of image <laughs> and I'm doing something really crazy here. I just wanted the vine of this really long one piece stamp. This is the Fluttering Butterflies stamp set. It has a coordinating washi set, but I only wanted that vine that was on the top. So I kind of wrapped this long stamp around a larger block that I had and I inked up the area that I wanted. I stamped it onto some vellum using some Versamark ink and then I sprinkled on some white embossing powder shook off the excess and heat set that and that seemed to work just perfectly. I was 
kind of hesitant to use my Misty Stamping Tool because this stamp is just a tiny bit long for the Misty, and I wanted to make sure that these vines stamped well. So I stamped those three times onto this vellum, heat set those, and now I'm taking the coordinating die and lining it up with that vine at the top and die cutting these three leaf elements for my cards. And now it's time to assemble my cards. Now I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue to the back side of this pink banner and I'm placing it over this gold banner at a slight offset. And I'm going to take my vellum leaf here and add that onto my notched rectangle. I will take my sentiment, which I did stack up with a couple extra layers, and place that onto the banner. And then I used foam adhesive to adhere the banner over the top of that notched rectangle. And let's just be real, I used foam adhesive on everything. <laughs> because I like dimension. I think it just adds so much life to a card. Now I finished off each of these cards with some gold metallic pearls from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm just placing them on using a little bit of liquid adhesive and my dual tipped embellishment tool. And that completes my three card projects featuring some tips for better, better press. And I think my favorite thing about all three of these cards is that they're perfect for any occasion. You could really change up the sentiment and maybe that leaf element that I used here to create cards for anything. So I have one that says your kindness means so much, one that says thank you, and one that says celebrate. And I have a few cards in my stash for upcoming occasions. Simple cards like this are perfect for creating these simple sets. They come together very quickly and it allows you to use a few different things for your stash, but not recreate the will each time you're creating these cards. Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. I wanna say thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed these projects. I hope you got some tips for some better, better press, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of the fabulous paper crafting and card making video tutorials shared. Let me know in the comments below which of these three backgrounds is your favorite. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.